How might an overlarge cuff affect your blood pressure reading? A. The reading would be artificially low. B. There would be no significant effect. C. The reading may be unstable. D. The reading would be artificially high. The answer is A. The reading would be artificially low. An overlarge blood pressure cuff will often result in a blood pressure reading that is artificially low. It is important that the nurse chooses the appropriate blood pressure cuff size for each individual patient. While assessing a patient's blood pressure, what part of the stethoscope should be placed against the patient's antecubital fossa, the bell, or the diaphragm? A. The diaphragm. B. The diaphragm should be used first, then the bell. C. The bell. D. The bell should be used first, then the diaphragm. The answer is A. The diaphragm. When taking a patient's blood pressure, the diaphragm alone should be used to listen at the antecubital fossa. The bell, used for low-pitched sounds, would not give the examiner accurate enough information to assess systolic or diastolic pressure. Which of the following would be considered a normal adult blood pressure? A. 124 over 84 millimeters of mercury. B. 88 over 56 millimeters of mercury. C. 110 over 72 millimeters of mercury. D. 132 over 88 millimeters of mercury. The answer is C. 110 over 72 millimeters of mercury. Normal adult blood pressure is anywhere from 90 to 120 mm of mercury systolic over 60 to 80 mm of mercury diastolic. 120 to 140 mm of mercury over 80 to 90 mm of mercury would be considered prehypertension, while anything over that would be considered either stage I or stage 2 hypertension. What is a normal respiratory rate for a child aged 1 to 6 years old? A. 34 to 44 breaths per minute. B. 12 to 24 breaths per minute. C. 36 to 54 breaths per minute. D. 24 to 34 breaths per minute. The answer is D. 24 to 34 breaths per minute. A normal respiratory rate in a child aged 1 to 6 years is 24 to 34 breaths per minute. This is significantly higher than an adult normal respiratory rate, which is 12 to 20 breaths per minute. What is a normal heart rate for an infant under 1 year old in beats per minute? BPM? A. 160 to 240 BPM. B. 100 to 160 BPM. C. 60 to 100 BPM. D. 30 to 60 BPM. The answer is B. 100 to 160 BPM. Infants have the highest heart rate of any age group. Normal heart rate for an infant under 1 year of age is 100 to 160 BPM. What is a normal heart rate for a school age child, 6 to 12 years of age, in beats per minute, BPM? A. 100 to 140 BPM. B. 50 to 70 BPM. C. 70 to 120 BPM. D. 120 to 160 BPM.
The answer is C. 70 to 120 BPM. Normal heart rate for a child aged 6 to 12 is 70 to 120 BPM. This is moderately higher than normal heart rate for an adult, which is 60 to 100 BPM. What is the correct way to determine proper blood pressure cuff size? A. The inflatable bladder should cover approximately 50% of the circumference of the forearm while its width should cover approximately 20%. B. The inflatable bladder should cover approximately 80% of the circumference of the forearm while its width should cover approximately 40%. C. The inflatable bladder should cover approximately 40% of the circumference of the forearm while its width should cover approximately 80%. D. The vinyl covering should be able to wrap at least twice around the forearm. The answer is B. The inflatable bladder should cover approximately 80% of the circumference of the forearm while its width should cover approximately 40%. Proper cuff size is very important for accurate blood pressure assessment. The correct way to determine proper blood pressure cuff size is to wrap the cuff around the arm, then note the area covered by the inflatable bladder. The inflatable bladder should cover approximately 80% of the circumference of the forearm while its width should cover approximately 40%. A stethoscope has two components to the chest piece. These are called the dash and the dash. A. Cone. Diaphragm. B. Bell. Diaphragm. C. Bell. Disc. D. Cone. Disc. The answer is B. Bell. Diaphragm. The chest piece of the stethoscope is made up of two components designed for auscultation, the bell and the diaphragm. The bell is dome-shaped and used for auscultation of low-pitched sounds, while the diaphragm is used to auscultate high-pitched sounds. A nurse takes a patient's blood pressure and records it at 146 over 92 millimeters of mercury. This is the patient's first visit to the clinic and they have no past medical records available. Would this patient be diagnosed with hypertension? A. Yes, this is stage I hypertension. B. No, there is not enough information. C. Yes, this is malignant hypertension. D. No, this is within the normal range. The answer is B. No, there is not enough information. A patient with a one-time high blood pressure reading cannot be diagnosed as hypertensive. A diagnosis of hypertension requires at least three measurements of blood pressure over 140 over 90 millimeters of mercury on at least two separate visits to healthcare provider. A patient with a blood pressure reading of 168 over 102 millimeters of mercury on three or more occasions would be diagnosed with what stage of hypertension? A. Stage 3 hypertension. B. Stage I hypertension. C. Stage 2 hypertension. D. Pre-hypertension. The answer is C. Stage 2 hypertension. Stage 2 hypertension is defined as a blood pressure equal to or greater than 160 mm of mercury systolic over 100 mm of mercury diastolic, taken at three different times on at least two separate occasions. Stage I hypertension is systolic blood pressure of 140 to 160 mm of mercury or diastolic blood pressure of 90 to 100 mm of mercury, while prehypertension is defined as a systolic blood pressure of 120 to 140 mm of mercury or diastolic blood pressure of 80 to 90 mm of mercury. 
Which of the following is not a normal part of taking a patient's vitals? A. Overall visual appearance. B. Pulse. C. Temperature. D. All of these are part of taking a patient's vitals. The answer is D. All of these are part of taking a patient's vitals. While most examiners remember to take the pulse, temperature, and blood pressure while assessing their patient's vitals, overall visual appearance is also an important part of an individual's vitals. Does the patient appear ill? Anxious? Are there any noticeable issues with hygiene or bizarre dress or movement? Are there any signs of pallor, jaundice, or cyanosis? All of these observations can be quickly noted in a patient's chart when taking vitals. The pulse of your patient is 120 beats per minute. What is the appropriate term for this finding? A. Normal heart rate. B. Dachycardia. C. Bradycardia. D. Aortic stenosis. E. Asystole. The answer is B. Dachycardia. Dachycardia is the term used to describe a faster than normal heart rate. A heart rate of more than 100 beats per minute is considered dachycardic. Bradycardia is used to describe a slower than normal heart rate. Less than 60 beats per minute is considered bradycardia. The physician on call pages you to ask if the patient you are taking care of is a which of the following vital signs would you find in an ephoral patient? A. Blood pressure of 105 over 89 millimeters of mercury. B. Temperature of 97.9 degrees Fahrenheit. C. Respiratory rate greater than 25 breaths per minute. D. Heart rate of 105 beats per minute. E. Temperature of 103.2 degrees Fahrenheit. The answer is B. Temperature of 97.9 degree Fahrenheit. Afbril is a term used to describe a patient who does not have a fever. Clinically, a fever is defined as a temperature greater than 100.4 degree Fahrenheit. Blood pressure, heart rate, and respiratory rate do not tell you if the patient has a fever. A 39 year old man presents to the ER with weakness, confusion, and vertigo. His heart rate is 91 and bounding, blood pressure is 132 over 85 millimeters of mercury, temperature is 99.0 F, and blood glucose is 49 milligrams per deciliter. He is non-diabetic, he is not on any medication, and he denies recreational drug use. Which of the following is the most likely cause of his symptoms? A. Hypertension. B. Hypoglycemia. C. Panic attack. D. Infection. The answer is B. Hypoglycemia. The most likely cause of his symptoms is hypoglycemia, which is defined as a blood glucose below 50 mg per deciliter in a non diabetic patient. The symptoms of hypoglycemia include altered consciousness, tremors, weakness, vertigo, headaches, heart palpitations, and a bounding pulse. A temperature of 99.0 degree Fahrenheit is not considered abnormal as it may reflect a normal variation in body temperature. His blood pressure is slightly elevated, but it is unclear whether this is typical for him or whether this represents a significant change from his normal blood pressure. Regardless it would not likely be sufficiently elevated to cause his symptoms. It is also possible he may be experiencing a panic attack, but in the presence of his depressed blood sugar, and absence of signs of anxiety, hypoglycemia is the most likely cause of his symptoms. 
abdominal rigidity and decreased bowel sounds would raise your suspicions of what condition? A. Cystitis. B. Cholecystitis. C. Peritonitis. D. Ulcerative colitis. The answer is C. Peritonitis. Abdominal rigidity and decreased bowel sounds are classic signs of peritonitis. In addition, the patient will often want to lie very still, as any motion often increases pain. Cystitis, ulcerative colitis, and cholecystitis all may cause significant abdominal tenderness but would not generally result in rigidity or decreased bowel sounds. Why are blind finger sweeps not recommended in infants with foreign objects in their oral cavities or airways? A. They may injure the oral cavity. B. They may force the object in deeper. C. They may trigger a gasping reflex. D. They may trigger a vomiting reflex. The answer is B. They may force the object in deeper. Blind finger sweeps are not recommended in an infant with airway restriction due to a foreign object because they may inadvertently force the object deeper into the airway. A finger sweep should only be used if the object can be visualized. Injury to the oral cavity would not be a primary concern in the case of airway restriction, and a finger sweep would not be expected to trigger either gasping or vomiting in an infant. All of the following are forms of shock except dash. A. Cardiogenic. B. Hypovolemic. C. Anaphylactic. D. All of these are forms of shock. The answer is D. All of these are forms of shock. The four main categories of shock are as follows, cardiogenic, sudden inability of the heart to pump sufficient blood to the body, most commonly due to acute myocardial infarction. Hypovolemic, due to loss of fluids or hemorrhage. Septic, also known as intotoxic shock. Dangerously low blood pressure as the result of systemic inflammatory response to infection. Anaphylactic, systemic inflammatory response to an allergen. What is the normal range for hemoglobin levels in an adult female? A. 12.1 to 15.1 gram per deciliter. B. 4.0 to 9.0 gram per deciliter. C. 14.1 to 21.1 gram per deciliter. D. 8.1 to 13.1 gram per deciliter. The answer is A. 12.1 to 15.1 gram per deciliter. The normal range for hemoglobin in an adult female is 12.1 to 15.1 gram per deciliter. Hemoglobin levels above that range may be indicative of chronic low blood oxygen, while lower levels of hemoglobin are seen in anemia. What is the normal range for hemoglobin levels in an adult male? A. 10.7 to 15.7 gram per deciliter. B. 13.6 to 7.7 gram per deciliter. C. 16.6 to 22.7 gram per deciliter. D. 18.7 to 23.7 gram per deciliter. The answer is B. 13.6 to 17.7 gram per deciliter. The normal range for hemoglobin levels in an adult male is 13.6 to 17.7 gram per deciliter. Hemoglobin levels above that range may be indicative of chronic low blood oxygen, while lower levels of hemoglobin are seen in anemia. 
what should you expect to hear when percussing the seventh intercostal space along the right midclavicular line? A. Donus. B. Hyperresonance. C. Dimpani. D. Resonance. The answer is A. Donus. When percussing the seventh intercostal space along the right midclavicular line, you should expect to hear a dull note, as this is directly over the solid mass of the liver. The border of the liver can be found by percussing in a descending line along the intercostal spaces of the right midclavicular line, starting at the clavicle. The superior border of the liver can be measured at the point where percussion transforms from resonant or high resonant, indicating the airfield lung, to dull indicating the solid mass of the liver. On palpating the abdominal aorta, the diameter of the aorta is measured at 3 cm. This indicates an abdominal aorta that is dash. A. Narrow door constricted. B. Normal size. C. Significantly enlarged and at risk for rupture. D. Slightly enlarged. The answer is B. Normal size. A healthy and normal abdominal aorta will measure between 2.5 to 3 cm in diameter. An abdominal aorta over 3 cm and under 5 cm in diameter is considered to be enlarged, and surgery to prevent abdominal aortic aneurysm is generally performed on abdominal aortas that surpass 5 cm in diameter in females or 5.5 cm in diameter in males. A patient reports to urgent care for colicky pain in the upper right quadrant that they rate as a 7 out of 10. The night before they ate a fatty meal with two glasses of wine. Which of the following tests would help you assess for cholecystitis? A. McBurney's point. B. So is sign. C. Murphy's sign. D. Rovzing's sign. The answer is A. Murphy's sign. A positive Murphy's sign is an indication of cholecystitis, or gallbladder inflammation. Testing for Murphy's sign is performed during an abdominal exam by asking the patient to breathe out slowly while the fingers of the examiner are slid under the right costal margin and held in place with firm pressure. The patient is then asked to inhale, which forces the abdominal contents upward. Murphy's sign is considered positive if the patient winces or flinches when breathing in, due to pain when the inflamed gallbladder comes in contact with the examiner's fingertips. Rovzing's sign, so is sign, and McBurney's point are all tests for appendicitis. When testing for the strength of the left biceps brachii muscle, a patient is found to be able to move freely against gravity but is unable to flex against very gentle resistance by the examiner. What grade of muscle strength should their bicep be assigned? A. 3 of 5 B. 2 of 5 C. 4 of 5 D. 1 of 5 The answer is A. 3 of 5. In this case, the patient is able to move their biceps brachii against gravity, but they are unable to move against gentle resistance by the examiner. This means the muscle strength should be graded at 3 of 5. The muscle strength grade is as follows, 0 of 5, no contraction 1 of 5, muscle contraction, but no movement 2 of 5, movement with gravity, but not against gravity 3 of 5, movement against gravity but not against resistance 4 of 5, movement against mild resistance by the examiner 5 of 5, normal muscle strength. What is the reference range for normal potassium levels? A. 3.5 to 5.0 milliequivalents per liter. B. 
3.5 to 4.8 milli equivalents per liter. C. 3.2 to 5.0 milli equivalents per liter. D. 3.2 to 4.8 milli equivalents per liter. The answer is A. 3.5 to 5.0 milli equivalents per liter. The range for normal potassium levels in blood is 3.5 to 5.0 milli equivalents per liter. Anything above that, hyperkalemia, or below that range, hypokalemia, is considered abnormal. What is the reference range for normal sodium levels? A. 138 to 148 milli equivalents per liter. B. 130 to 140 milli equivalents per liter. C. 135 to 145 milli equivalents per liter. D. 132 to 142 milli equivalents per liter. The answer is C. 135 to 145 milli equivalents per liter. Normal levels for sodium are between 135 to 145 milli equivalents per liter. Anything below 135 milli equivalents per liter, hyponatremia, or above 145 milli equivalents per liter, hypernatremia, this is considered abnormal and should be evaluated further.